companies of manufacturing is creating the unmakeable. And this is one of the things that you can do in the mechanical space. And you see this with uh, companies like GE making nozzles for the jet engines that would otherwise be impossible to make. Electronics is right for the same kind of transformation. Electronics doesn't have to be flat. Electronics doesn't have to be something that you add into your system. It can be your system. Form and function can coexist in one and the same part. And this is really an area that we've been exploring a lot recently as we can also work with traditional MCAD type software files such as Gerber, but also an entirely new way to design your parts. And examples of this really rely on being able to use the freeform design to place your conductor or your dielectric anywhere you like. So you create a pump, but it's a smart pump. You add intelligence into your active manufacturing capabilities. So you can create smart parts, you can electrify objects, you can add uh, features to a more traditional PC that couldn't be added without using an active approach. And that would be items like, like the following. One example is the ability to print curves or to print coils. And what you see in this part here is actually that metal coil is within the polymer, cycling through and looping through. Impossible to make using traditional subtractive processes. But coils lie at the core of so much of the, the electronic engineers talking whether you're looking at inductance, whether you're looking at magnets, whether you're looking at motors, coils are a core ingredient, and coils and additive manufacturing are really an easy thing to make. So beyond just coils, if you take that into a spiral type application, what you see here is an electromagnet. That could also have been a, a motor, or it could have been a sensor, but here in a very, very um, thin part, many coils, as many as 12 coils in less, in, in less than a millimeter. And the ability to print thin layers enables uh, the possibility of adding functionality to parts in ways that previously wouldn't have been possible. So it's about the density of the material, but it's also about the kind of shapes you can make. If you look at this, this is a very traditional MID or molded interconnected device where there's conductive traces and not making a journey that is horizontal or vertical through the path. They're flowing within the path in any direction you like. You'll see there are angles, there are flat surfaces, um, and some of those traces are also within the object itself. So it enables you to do things, um, particularly say from an antenna perspective or from a uh, functionality density perspective, where you can get functionality into places that you otherwise couldn't. And that allows you not just to save space, but to save weight. This part here, for example, can combine the PCB with what would otherwise require connectors or harnessing or soldering or some kind of assembly where you've got two rolls handling you've got the PCB. But you've also got a, a connector, but it's all been printed, one shot. And this takes you into the directions of you know, how much of a final product can actually be printed. How much functionality um, can you print in? This is a piece of work we were doing on, uh, on the thermometer, for example, where the entire part is printed, the wiring inside is also printed. So a tremendous amount of value can be printed into your part. Value that allows you to do things that otherwise would be really difficult. Do you want to have different mechanical properties within your part? Is there some advantage to having uh, like a Rigiflex type, uh, type circuit where you can bend different parts of your circuitry around the product that you're designing and fit it into smaller spaces? Again, no harnesses, no connectors, no wiring, all printed. And we can do that by playing with the thickness of the print. And we can also do it by adjusting the geometry. If you look at the surface of this particular part, it's actually been adjusted so that you can relieve the stress when you bend the part by changing the surface of that polymer, allowing you to create a flexible part out of an inherently rigid material. 
and as you take those thicknesses down, you can dial in even greater flexibility. If you want it to have a much better uh, radius for curvature, that's absolutely doable. You adjust the thickness of your car, very high resolution, allowing you then to create different mechanical properties within your car based upon the thickness of the material as it's deposited. So you get the capability to print new shapes, print new mechanical properties, to have new functions, whether it's an electromagnet or in this case, a, essentially a linear motion device where you can move parts um, using the electrical uh, wiring to shift things along, rather like a linear motor. You can also look at it as something that has more of a structural role. So do you build your entire product out of the printer and start adding in real mechanical strength? Can you then also create something allows you to save even more space. It's no longer a fight for real estate. The surface of PCBs is limited. But you can take a 3D printer like, uh, like ours and if you start adding your electrical components within that part. And this means you really have a range of capabilities which include mechanical rigidity, mechanical flexibility, the components themselves, the LEDs, the resistors are within that part. And one's beginning that journey towards really distributing the smartness within the product to maximize the mechanical and the electrical, and in some ways, the protective properties as well. These parts are embedded in clothes, protected from humidity, protected from heat, um, and you then make this journey towards creating a better reception with your aerials, better fit, better form, better function, all in that journey to optimizing products and making the amazing.